using the same problem in parts 1 and 2 of this lecture series, let's move forward to question number 4. Suppose that management believes that a 20% reduction in the selling price will result in a 20% increase in sales. If this proposed reduction in selling price is implemented, how much will be the change in operating income? Please be reminded that this question is independent of the previous one, as clearly stated here. Each situation is to be evaluated separately. That means the information in question number three does not have anything to do with this one. I can see two possible solutions to answer this question. The first one is to determine the operating income before and after the reduction in selling price and then compare the two figures. Without the reduction in the selling price, total sales would be $400 multiplied by 2,000 units. And that is $800,000. Variable cost would be $100 multiplied by 2,000 units. And that is $200,000. That gives us the contribution margin of $600,000. Less fixed cost of $240,000. equals $360,000 operating income before the proposed 20% reduction in selling price. How about the operating income after the implementation of the 20% reduction in selling price? With the proposal, the selling price would become $320. That is $400 multiplied by 80%. Or if you want, $400 multiplied by 20% or 0.2 equals $80. Then subtract that $80 from $400 to get the same new selling price of $320. The 20% reduction in the selling price will result in a 20% increase in sales, meaning in sales volume. Hence, the number of units expected to be sold would be 2,400. That is, 2,000 units multiplied by 120% or 1.2 in decimal. So, $320 new selling price multiplied by 2,400 units equals the total sales of $768,000. Variable cost would be $100 multiplied by 2,400 units. And that is equal to $240,000, which when subtracted from $768,000 would give us the contribution margin of $528,000. With total fixed costs remaining at $240,000, there would be $288,000 operating income after the implementation of the 20% reduction in selling price. 
comparing this figure with the amount before the 20% reduction in selling price of $360,000, there is clearly a decrease in operating income of $72,000, which suggests that management must not implement the proposal. The second way to get this same answer is to determine the individual effect on the operating income of, number one, the 20% reduction in the selling price. And number two, the 20% increase in sales volume or number of units sold. And then, combine the two figures. The 20% reduction in the selling price, which is equivalent to $80, multiplied by the projected sales level of 2,000 units, would cost the total sales and consequently the operating income to decrease by $160,000. Because the number of units sold is needed both in the computation of the total sales and the total variable cost, the 20% increase in sales volume would affect not only the total sales but also the total variable cost. Or in other words, it would affect the contribution margin and consequently the operating income. So we have to multiply the 20% increase in sales volume, which is equivalent to 400 units, by the new contribution margin per unit of $220. And that would give us $88,000 increase in operating income. $160,000 decrease and $88,000 increase equals net decrease of $72,000 as previously computed. Let's have another question. Saborido Manufacturing produces a single product that sells for $400. Variable cost per unit equal $100. The company expects total fixed cost to be $240,000 for the next month. How many units must be sold to achieve the entity's desired profit of $150,000? Actually, we can solve for this using an algebraic equation, right? Let x be equal to the number of units needed to be sold. $400 x minus $100 x minus $240,000 equals $150,000 and then solve for the value of X. But let's use the break-even point formula instead. Fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. We just have to add the desired or target profit as part of the numerator to get the number of units needed to be sold in order to achieve the target profit.
and that is 1,300 units. As proof, we may present a variable costing income statement where we can see that selling 1,300 units will indeed provide the entity with the desired profit of $150,000.